I think Google Scholar has had its moment in time and now it's time to bury the old ways of doing research and turn to AI because there are smarter ways to find research gaps, map citations, write literature reviews and even draft peer reviewed papers and there's one tool that's ambitiously trying to do it all, giving researchers not just these features but even the power to build their own academic AI tools and that tool is Answer This, let's go check it out. So when you sign in to Answer This it looks like like this, I've paid for the pro version, to be honest with you, the light version is also very, very powerful. So go give it a go for free. Go give it a go. Yeah, you know what I mean. All right, then. So this is answer this. Look, it looks like any other kind of like chatbot in this area at the moment. You've got this area where you can type a research question. You can also put in tags and stuff. But this is where I think they really understand what researchers need. And that's this down here. Type, auto. So auto gives you full review and quick Q and A. But ultimately, Ultimately, if you're doing a literature review, you'd obviously put off full review. But leaving it on auto just means it's going to choose the best that it thinks for you at the time. And then we've got sources. We can upload PDFs. It can find papers for you. You can search the internet. I like to leave these two on. And also, if you've got stuff in your library, you can also search for those. You've also got this mode, light and pro. Like I said, light is very, very powerful, but I've paid for pro. So let's go on to pro. And then this side, more filters, is where you really understand that this separates itself from uh, normal AI tools because they really understand the academic process because here at the top you've got minimum citations if you want sort of like a number of things referenced then you've got databases it says select internet as well for more sources all right then we've got research papers then we can choose which uh, databases even apparently they're about to incorporate uh, Google Scholar which is great um, so those are suitable for me at the moment then we've got web searches and then down here patents my library quality of journal now if i'm doing something that requires tip top research i will choose q1 and q2 but at the moment i'm doing a broad search because it's early on in my research so i'm just going to leave it as all and then i can just click search so that's a very simple way and i can see all of the things that i've done here let's have a look let's go down here to one that i've done previously and i said write a literature review on the advancements of self-healing electrodes and nanocomposite materials and this is what it spat out i am very impressed with this it's not the most detailed literature review view that I've ever seen any AI tool sort of like kick out. I think there are better AI tools for literature reviews. Go check out my channel to see which ones uh, perform well. But really, as a tool to do this, to find the, the references, I think it's great. Now, one of the things I was sort of like surprised at is that it only found six references down here. I asked it for up to 20, but I did say, give me only Q1 journals. You can see all of the stuff that I put down here. Um, I can rerun this again without such strict kind of like guardrails but ultimately this is what it gave me now there's so much more that you can do normally in an ai tool for science and research they say there we are there's the thing that you want good luck enjoy but it goes so much further and this is what i think the future of academic research tools will look like all right yeah, enough enough blabbing let's check it out so not only do you get the research output that you wanted, you also get this on the side. Let's expand this. And you've got all of these things that you can do. There's so much you can do in this tool. It's almost a little bit overwhelming. But um, you can see here, I've got sources for Q1 journals at the top. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the sort of like thing I was working on. Then we've got table views. You can sort it, extract data. But here's the thing. You can also sort of like chat. If it's got PDF available, you can chat with that document. You can also show the details details which will show you the abstract but up here is what I really like if I select all of these and then go bibliometric analysis it will run a bibliometric analysis on that area and that is sort of like a little uh, deepening tool that I can use to find out more about a research area so we've got publications by year we can see it's increasing citations by year um, combined publications citations citation impact we've got word clouds abstract word clouds top authors now this is what I'd be really interested in down here is not only only top terms that I can use to kind of like search for other papers um, but also top authors so here you can see the top authors and I can go find them on another tool and uh, you know essentially stalk them in a professional academic way of course but I really like that you can go deeper and deeper than sort of like any other tool that I've seen before um, and you can ask follow-up questions love it love it but you can do so much more look at this down here library search papers citation there's so much more but before we get into 
to that, if you scroll down to the bottom down here, blah, 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 blah. This is edit with AI. And I think this is a true powerhouse of this tool. Let's check it out. So clicking edit with AI brings up this AI editor and there's so much you can do. Now, the layout's a little bit strange because to understand what you can do with this, you need to go all the way across to this side. Look, it's all the way over here. I, I actually didn't see this when I first tried this tool. But look, over here, you've got assistant. Here, it will analyze your text and give you sort of like feedback. You've got generate an outline. You've got full answer to questions. So essentially, these are all little tools that you can use on the stuff that's been generated. I really like that because quite often you want to work with the uh, text that's generated in a much more deeper deeper fashion in a more deep fashion. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, here we go. Uh, if I highlight this, for example, and I'm in the AI edit, it says work with this selected text and then I can reword it, summarize it, generate questions, custom prompt if I want. And then I can also, and I really like this, you can search for new sources to support what you're saying. And then you can search here, you've got custom source search settings, all of the stuff you had on the main page. So you can see that it is just really, really ambitious in the sort of power it's giving you as a researcher. And so uh, yeah, down here we've also library, you can extract some of the data from this stuff, which I really like. So if you click here and click extract data, it will actually sort of like, you know, find data within a research paper and give it to you. Um, there's just so much. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute because it's another really sort of like nice feature of this tool. Um, search for papers, help and guide sayings. Oh my God, there's so much in this AI editor. And uh, yeah, it's a really great way of making sure you stay in control of the output. Not only then are we guaranteed that, you know, the first thing that gets generated is a first draft, but then we can use this to go and modify it, add stuff, make it longer, uh, reword things, summary, you know, it's just very, very powerful. That's what I want to get at. So you can also continue writing. So from this cursor position, you can say, you know, continue writing and then custom instruction, continue writing from this point, maintaining the same structure and flow, continue writing, and then it will generate text at the cursor position. So just a really nice workflow of working with sort of um, a generated text. If you're not a huge fan of gen and Yomu, something like this may be right up your alley. Now stay around because we're going to dive into all of the tools on the side and I think there's something in there I've never seen before and I think you'll love it. So there's a quick tour of all of the things you can do from the main page, but it's teasing you. Look at this main page down here. We've got explore tools. Oh, oh, there's more things. Oh, look at all these things. It can get a little bit overwhelming, but I'm going to talk you through it. So it's not. So first here, AI writer. We've seen that. We've used it. Excellent. Next thing, library. So you can upload stuff just like in other AI tools. I really like it. Yes, this is my default project. And then obviously we can extract data. We can do all sorts of things. We can key findings, add a column, and it will add a column on the side about all of the key findings. Um, I really, really like all of that sort of stuff. And the library tab gets even more powerful if you click this button, check this out. So here we've got all of the things that I talked about, but table view is where you get a very sort of like easy summary of all of the papers at once and you can add columns. So for example, if from all of my papers, I wanted to see what the research gaps were, you can see that it generates the research gaps for every single paper. We've seen tools like this with Elicit, with SciSpace. This is a really nice, simple way of um, you know getting that same information. It is very fast and uh, you can see here that the research gaps identified in include the need for further explanation, blah, blah, blah. And then here we get future work. Uh, let's have a look. Key findings. I can just keep on clicking and it will generate an AI summary of all of the things that it finds in these papers. So a really great way of quickly getting a handle, a grab, an interesting insight into the papers that you want to read. Love it. All right. And to get out of this, you just click list view and then you're back in this nice big list of research papers. Does it get any easier? Not sure. A little bit more detail in a minute. Search papers. So you can search for relevant papers. You can see here I'm searching for nanocomposite OPV devices. And then, uh, yeah, you get this. And, uh, you know, it's just a really nice, easy way of finding um, different papers in your research field, all in that one tool and obviously that one subscription. So they are trying to hit 
every part of the research sort of like process and uh, they're doing quite a good job at it because I think they're listening to PhD students and what they want. Another thing, citation maps. So this is like lit maps, this is like research rabbit. This is something that, uh, you know, I think isn't quite powerful enough just generally outside of this tool even, but uh, it is a really nice way to put a seed paper right here. I put in one of my papers and you can see other papers that you want to make sure you know about because they reference this paper um, and you can look at papers. Okay, search all papers and then you've got here most cited, most connected, top contributing authors. So a really great way to sort of like visually and networkly Hmm, not sure I'm happy about that word, uh, but use the network to sort of like explore the uh, area around a particular paper. And here I've got one origin, but you can add more origins. And uh, yeah, then you end up with just loads of different sort of like connections. Love it. So it is a really great way if you just got a little five minutes and you're like, you know, I'm going to explore this area. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then what, what also have we got? We've got diagram down here. So, um, you know, you can create a diagram. You see you can create flow charts, state diagrams git graphs, class diagrams. So if there's something in here, mind map, for example, there we are, let's have a look. What do I want to describe? OPV devices. You have probably had enough about this at the moment. OPV devices, generate diagram, and then it will generate my diagram over here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is a great way if you've got a new research field and you want to make sure that you're over all of the concepts here. OPV devices, we've got advantages, simple design, low cost, high efficiency. Then we've got research areas over here. Then we've got all of that stuff. So uh, is it really useful at the moment? Not particularly. I'd like to see a mind map, you know, from my library, for example, that would be pretty cool. But um, yeah, at the moment, I think it's sort of like heading in the right direction, but maybe not suitable for my field, but maybe it's perfect for your research field. That was diagram. Um, and what else have we got? Tools. Now, this is where it gets a little bit crazy because not only have you got that main sort of like offering of answer this, you also have got access to all of these tools. And uh, that is pretty amazing. So they cover writing, research analysis, productivity, and then my tools. We'll talk about that in a minute. But look down here, trending, empathy tools. So even for peer review process that they've actually sort of like collaborated with different universities to create this, which is great. So try the empathy tool and then you can go through it. And look, it gives you an idea of the steps to actually peer review and uh, it will help you if you're in that stage of your research. So reviews should evaluate manuscripts by understanding the journal scope, scope and then, you you know, you can run this stage, you can put the paper in if you're allowed to, um, and the, uh, you know, the privacy matches what you want. There we are. There I got there. Um, and yeah, you can go through this. Anyway, this is something I haven't seen in any other tools, which I think is pretty cool. So let's go back. We get essay writer, research gap finder, AI paraphraser, and this is what I really like here. Look, create. And if you've, if you've always wanted that perfect AI tool specifically for your research, this is where you can go in and give it a go for yourself because here you can create a um, AI tool. So literature review assistant demo, who can discover this for? Let's just make it for me. So then you add a short description but you can also add like a detailed description. I would personally use something like ChatGPT Playground to generate this detailed description. Maybe they could sort of like, you know, put a little button in here which says, oh, generate that for me. I'd like to see that. All right, then uh, continue research and then system prompt. This is the system prompt um, and then select capabilities. There we are, all of this stuff. So you can go through all of these stages and actually generate your own AI tool specifically for you. Uh, you can even upload your PDF. Um, and uh, yeah, overall, it's a really fantastic sort of like way of creating your own tool. All right, AI tool with this name already exists. I know I stop being so mean. All right. So that is answer this. It is ambitious. The founders of this tool are listening to what you want. And I'm very impressed with what I see based on where they were last time I reviewed this tool, even I think it was a couple years ago, even. So ultimately, they are trying to be a one stop shop for researchers. And are they heading that direction? Absolutely. So I love the direction that they're taking. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes in the future. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the AI tools that academics swear by.